G'day, Michael here. Um, this video is long overdue. I was asked about this about two months ago, so apologies for being so slow, but I've had a bit on my plate. Um, this rotary axis is basically set up so that it uses this stepper motor to rotate the part by just rotating these uh, textured uh, cylinders or bars or whatever you want to call them. Now what I've done here is I'm, I'm doing a rolling pin here and what I've done is I've put elastic bands on here. Now that has two benefits. Of course it improves the traction but it also means that it's only supported either end so it's not going to rock. Now to enable this motor to do the work of rotating we have to disconnect what is what you can't see with the light here. There's a motor in here which is the y-axis motor. So basically you're disabling the overall y-axis and putting in the rotary axis. Quite simple. Plug one out, plug the other one in. This is just sitting here using gravity because the laser exerts no force so it doesn't really need anything to hold it. You do have to pay attention that you get it pretty parallel. Um, so basically I just lined it up to this bar. Now when you turn the machine on, it does a little dance, it does its home cycle and it rotates this cylinder, thinking that it's uh, moving the X and Y uh, table normally. To pause it from doing that, I'll just actually, I'll do a demonstration. If I press reset, it'll actually re do that cycle. So just watch the machine. It'll restart the controller and it'll start the home cycle. So now I have to press the escape key to stop it running off forever. Now what I'll do is I'll use the right arrow key on the dis display here to bring the unit back into position to where I want it. And that's it there. Okay, I've got to say that is my new origin, so I press the origin button. But there's an important configuration in RD Works. At first I guess I suppose I should uh, explain the size. Now what you need to do is measure this diameter and multiply by pi and that is then the effective height of what you're printing or engraving. Okay so I've done the calculation it's basically the diameter of that where the rubber band is times pi that gives the height but here's the configuration you need in the actual program where am I? Here we go. On the right hand side here, you see the work is what you normally see. We have to go to the output tab and we have to enable rotate engrave. Now the stepper motor here is 8,000 pulses for the, for the rotation and this 23.5 is the diameter of that bar, that uh, textured bar that's underneath. Okay, so that's one thing. Now we press the origin to make sure that the location we're at right now is our home position. Now I've checked it for height off the cylinder. The next thing we have to do is also say our machine has to be referring to our current position. Otherwise it'll run off trying to use the table positioning. Okay, so with a bit of luck that should be correct. If I go start, all being well, we should get the thing engraving. Let us pray. Okay, so as you can see, now it's doing a dance backwards and forwards. It's got plenty of time on its sleeve uh, of not engraving. So I'll go to the power output. It's on the work tab. I've got it set to 70% power. Now, what you need to understand with these lasers, if you're not already aware of it, this is not a laser power setting. This is the output of the power supply to the laser. In other words, the power supplied by the controller to the laser. The laser is probably only capable of using 65 to 70% of power, and certainly if you're gonna use it absolutely 100% for hours on end, you might only be able to use it at 50%. But we're getting away with it because there's a lot of time off. As you can see, this shape is mostly not engraving. So it's only, let's call it 50% duty cycle or less. So running it at 70% power is actually okay, but if it was running it continuously, you might only be able to do something like about 55% power. That's 55% output power from the power supply, not 55% of the laser. 
Um, the, if, if you think about it in a continuous term, the laser doesn't actually start, uh, doesn't actually initialize properly till about probably 13% output, and running continuously at about 50, 55% of the output of the power supply on these typical setups will in fact give you about as much as the laser can give in a continuous cycle. It's only because we're having time off that we can actually throw more at it. Now I've actually had this running at 100% power when there's a lot of time off and that's okay because the laser has a time off. Okay, so, but don't think of that power there on the screen here as the output power of the laser. It is the output power of the power supply feeding the laser. Very important detail. A lot of people uh, overlooked this and it took me a while to get it to. Okay, so that's a way doing its thing. It's gonna take quite some time. Uh, there's probably no need for me to actually go through the process of fast forwarding through this. But anyway, I hope that was of interest to you. Um, feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.